Hello and thank you for tuning in to Far Above Rubies today. I'm so very glad that each of you are here. Today we're continuing our series on lessons from the wilderness, things we can take away from the time that the children of Israel spent wandering in the wilderness. We're talking today about the idea that God is our rescuer. Your reading challenge for today, we're going to read it together, is Exodus chapter 3 verses 7 through 8. It says, Then the Lord told him, speaking to Moses, I have certainly seen the oppression of of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. While some might look at this scenario and say, why did God allow suffering to happen in the first place? Why did God allow the children of Israel to get into the predicament that they were in? And what I see here is the faithfulness of God to both hear and rescue his people. We will endure suffering in this broken world that we walk through. But God is our rescuer. God is our rescuer. My favorite children's Bible uh, that we read in our home, it's called the Jesus Storybook Bible, and it repeatedly refers to Jesus Christ as being the rescuer, the one who rescues his people from their sins. And I love that terminology so much. We can be angry at God for allowing the trouble to come in the first place, or we can keep our eyes fixed on the truth of his faithfulness, the truth that God is our rescuer, the truth that he does hear our prayers, he does understand, see, and wrap his heart around our suffering, and he does do something about it. Our our prayers do not fall on to deaf ears. He is the God who hears us, and that might seem like such a simple thing if you've walked with Jesus for a very long time. It might seem um, cliche. It might seem like a, a term, a, a saying that we pull out to just make somebody feel better and pat them on the back. Oh, God hears you. But you don't understand the power of saying that God hears our prayers. There are so many people all over the world who pray to tiny little statues and who pray to false gods and who pray to things that cannot, cannot help them. To say that our God hears our prayers, that he works on our behalf, that is a powerful thing. God didn't send well wishes or fruit baskets when he saw the suffering of the people of Israel. He didn't say, oh, things will look up tomorrow. I'll keep you in my thoughts. Here's a little meal with a a plastic cover for you to hang in there with. That's not what God did. He rolled up his sleeves and he got to work on behalf of the ones he loved. He got to work on behalf of his people. So I tell you, friend, whatever you're walking through today, whatever you're carrying into this new year, whatever thing that you're saying, hey, God, have you even heard my prayers? Have you even understood where I am? God, have you forgotten where I am? I just want to leave you with this encouraging message today that God is your rescuer. He does hear your prayers and he is rolling up his sleeves to work on your behalf so that he will work out all things, even those things for your good. I hope that you'll go and read Exodus chapter 3 today. You can read it in its entirety. We focused on verses 7 and 8 today and be reminded that God comes down into our situation. He comes down into our mess. He comes down into our uncertainty, our doubt, our fear, our anxiety. He comes down into the middle of our depression. He comes down right to where we live and he becomes our rescuer. Thank you for being here with me today. And if no one's told you lately, you are loved and you are cherished and you are valuable. You have beautiful and tremendous worth, my sweet friend. And that worth is far above rubies. Thank you for being here today. I'll see you all again tomorrow. God bless you.